Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you guys are doing incredibly well. Obviously, we had the shock news late last night. It broke at 6 p.m. UK time that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, does have cancer. Even though she had gone through the surgery, they considered whatever they had removed. I just call it tissue because I don't know what it was. They were thinking that that was going to be it, that there was nothing wrong. But as they went and tested whatever tissue they had acquired, they discovered that she did actually have cancerous cells. And so they are going ahead and giving her chemotherapy treatments. And so as far as we know, she's only getting, you know, you could call it one round. So just an initial of chemotherapy chemotherapy there, but it is obviously a huge, huge shock. Most of the world is very shocked. They had initially told us that her, when she had had the surgery, that it was not cancerous. And so they weren't anticipating anything like that, but obviously tests proved otherwise. And we know a couple more details now, like Prince William, the reason he pulled out of the memorial service for his godfather, King Constantine, is that it was around the time, it seems like, of Catherine's first treatment. Uh, we know they probably knew before that point, but that was when she had her first treatment was at around that period of time. We do know that the couple probably won't attend Easter services. They have already gone back to Norfolk. We do know that the family was aware, at least the, some of the immediate family, obviously not Harry and Meghan or perhaps some of the other extended royals. So this has been a huge, huge shock, especially with Charles also having cancer. So this has just been a whirlwind week. And obviously as well, you have just the terribleness that people have been behaving on social media, just the absolute deplorable behavior regarding Catherine. And now that we know what's truly going on, there should be a lot of red faces around the internet. However, I still see people is making some of the most inexcusable excuses you could possibly imagine. Oh, but Scobie, of course, comes to mind because he had a countdown to when an announcement would go live. And obviously, now that we know what the announcement is, it looks pretty bad. He deleted it and said, oh, the media twisted it. I was like, no, you put it up there. We all know where you stand on things. So people can read into it what they what they will. But the children know, and Catherine and William, we wanted to make sure as well the children were told and Catherine and really wanted to make sure that the kids were out of school before the news dropped. That way they could have time together as a family and not have to deal with the pressures of the media or even friends at the school trying to get more information. This could have also been as well instigated by all the press and media speculation regarding Catherine. I think it's sort of a mixed bag, whereas yes, that could be the case, but also there are some other things going on there as well. So guys, thank you so much for joining. We will go into so much more. And we do have a new YouTube member, DS. And YouTube members, yes, I had obviously was going to edit yesterday afternoon, my first attempt at the podcast. And obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> so I will still be working on that. Although part of it, I feel like is sort of out of date now, but we will get that. But thank you so much, DS, for becoming a member. We do have one of our members here, Nana. Even if we cannot relate to the royal family as royalty, we can relate to cancer and its challenges. So true. Desert Mermaid said, good morning, Brittany. The Harkle's message really infuriated me because they referenced her as Kate. She's Princess Catherine. Megan is too jealous to refer to her as Princess Despicable. Yes, and... Again, she apparently does prefer Catherine. That's usually what people refer to her as who actually do know her. And so obviously as well, it just seems a little... I mean, the whole statement just read is really, really cold to me. I mean, you see more strangers around the internet who have more compassionate responses than Harry and Meghan. <laughs> Nana says, I'm hoping that the outpouring love and support from all over the world sets off all the challenges of their lack of privacy. Oh. I wish it will, but I just don't know if that's necessarily going to be the case. I think somewhat there may be a, a desire to get more, but obviously as well, the, the media has behaved very re reprehensively in this entire situation. Missy Me says, hello, Wendy Foreign. Well, firstly, there was, of course, the late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her father, George VI, and all who passed from cancer. I think Edward did, too. So we don't know exact details. I mean, it's been widely reported about the Queen, but I don't know if the palace has ever officially confirmed the cancer diagnosis. So um, I, I hesitate to go that far. But obviously, as well, there were others who had cancer, too. <clears throat> Just goes to show that cancer does not discriminate whoever you are. Yes. 
No, true. Gunita says, good morning. Do you think based on reaction fa- last few months, Catherine is starting to become as famous as Diana? Props to you for a great reporting about the cancer. My mom had it and chemo is terrible. Yes, chemo is 100% terrible. And again, it's it's cycles. Most people I've known have been on three-week cycles. So again, you feel horrible the first week, better the second week, yourself the third week, and then you re- you know you, you cycle through that for as long as you need to. Um <clears throat> I definitely think when it comes to Catherine, I mean, obviously as well, when you have something like cancer or something that becomes a huge reaction to the world and people, of course, a lot of sympathy goes out to you. And so I think she is definitely becoming uh, as famous or infamous as I know people say infamous is bad, but I just mean so, so unbelievably famous. But um, when it comes to I mean, it's so different because I feel like Diana had this different type of charisma than Catherine does. I think they are very different people in a lot of ways, and I think that's fine. So I don't really know if Catherine's becoming as famous because she Diana just had one of those sort of unique star power type of situations. And Catherine, I don't think, is as interested in some of that as you could say Diana was or reacted to. So I'm not sure, but I think she obviously has become just huge and just the, the it's amazing to see how somebody being out of the spotlight can generate so much. Missy me says, may our thoughts and prayers be with Catherine during this difficult time. Yes. Rich says people have such disrespect for the word privacy and become so aggressive after it. It's exhausting. Yes. And when we come to privacy as well, it's obviously just like, you know, to me, we had been given a timeline of Catherine's return and this statement coming right now makes sense because obviously her return will be much, much further in the future. So they did have to adjust the timetable and they didn't really even give one, but I just felt like, well, she said she was going to be gone. And she said, (laughs) and she said like how long it would be. And so I'm like, well, where, where, where is it? Like, how is this so hard for people? Again, it's like explaining gravity to a chicken. I love that line. It's, it's just so true. It's like it's, they told us she wouldn't be back until after Easter. It's not after Easter yet. I don't know what candle calendar you're looking at. So anyways, um, but it's, again, very, very sad how her privacy has been disrespected. Oh, Missy Me, please have a Wittards on me. What is your favorite flavor, Brittany? So I liked they, they had a cinnamon one. Hold on one second. Little pause wants to say hi. Uh, so they had a cinnamon one, and that one was my favorite. And then they got rid of it. But I do like their new coconut flavor. I really like it. Their classic hot chocolate is very, very good. They had a peanut butter hot chocolate for a while. And then of course, you guys say hello to Miss Pippa. She says hi, Kim. Miss Pippa, can you see? Can you see? <laughs> she thinks there's something there. And I'm wearing today my team at Cambridge shirt. I had these made. I was gonna do like a Jennifer Aniston, Angelina Jolie competition with t-shirts having Team Cambridge and Team Sussex t-shirts, but that didn't come to pass. But I do actually have the t-shirts. Oh, but thank you so much, Missy Me. So let's go back here. Nana says, I am no longer engaging in any discussion regarding Harry and Meghan. The, word, the world doesn't need them by negative energy. Only prayers... For healing to anyone who's suffering from cancer. Yes, Asma says, hi, everyone. Becky says, I knew it was only a matter of time before they started to hunt Kath- Catherine down after surgery, where I think this all went wrong is Kensington Palace not putting out the right information. Yes and no. Yes and no. Because yes, they needed to put out certain levels of information, but we are not required to know all the information people need to i think get this out of their systems that oh we need to know everything they told us she had surgery they told us she would be recovering there is no requirement that she has to parade herself out around for people to feel better that's not how this should work and yes perhaps kensington palace i think could have done a better job mitigating some things but They did not know. And I don't think, again, this is just my theory. I don't think even her staff knew until this week that she had been diagnosed with cancer. Nobody is required to give away a diagnosis like that until they are ready. They are not required to give that information to anybody else, but who they feel comfortable giving it to at that particular time. It's called privacy, the right to privacy, as well, medical confidentiality, a bunch of things. So I think that, yes, Kenzie and Palace could have done some things better, but I don't think it's putting out, quote unquote, the right information, because what is that? What is the right information that, you know, she has 
like, you know, a week after that she has cancer, she hasn't even recovered yet. She hasn't even started treatments yet. So the press would maybe even feel right to hound her. Again, I don't think that anybody should have to give out their personal private medical information until they feel ready to do so. Because obviously this is changing. And you think as well, the king had to give his out early because he is head of state. Catherine is not head of state. She is a private person. And he had you could say a more a relatively minor procedure, whereas she had major surgery. So again, she's going through something very, very major. We don't know what the cancer is. It could have been traumatic, whatever it was in terms of what, what the surgery required. And so she felt very uncomfortable, didn't want to talk about that publicly. Again, we don't have the right to the right information. Same thing with our state department or department of defense. I don't want to know what they're, all they're dealing with behind the scenes. Why? Because I don't need to know. That's their job. Catherine's has the right to privacy and to keep her medical information confidential. And so again, and as of, as well, I would agree or argue that I don't. I really don't think her staff probably knew. I don't. I just don't think they did. Because I, I wonder too. I was thinking about it with the tr whole trooping the color situation because she was identified as being at it, and then they pulled her out. And so I wonder if one of her staff members said, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, because they didn't know. And then they goes up there and then they're getting, you know, a call from Catherine and William going, yeah, you, you need to pull that. And they're like, well, why? And they're like, well, just trust us. You need to pull it. And now we know why. So, again, very complicated. Uh, so Zanny says, why would you use Kate Middleton in the title? Girl, I trusted you. I'm disappointed. It's one of those things you do for the algorithm. That's what most people Google. And so. It is Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, because even I think it was CBS or something did the same thing. And yes, obviously as well, people get frustrated by it, but that is the truth. That is what people Google. It just is. Colleen says, morning, everyone. Missy me. Ritz, I just lost all meaning. It just lost all meaning, especially by people who just thought they knew better. Yes, I'm looking at you, the press. Yes. So Azima says from Bristol, we have Gemstone Girl from Bath. We have Becky. One of the saddest Saturday mornings I know of. Good morning, RNN members. Yes, it is very, very sad news for sure. Colleen said as well, such sad news. But she was so dignified the way she shared it. No self-pity, just concern for her children and her family and letting other cancer victims know they are not alone. Yes. Mima says, good morning. Royalists, we have Missy Me. Hi, Azima. So glad you're here. Someone says, apologies, Arnita. I was I'm looking at you, the media and the UK abroad and the Sussex squad. Oh, gosh, the Sussex squad. Um, oh, Chris Overview, thank you so much for, uh, for Princess of Wales treats for Pippa. Why, thank you. She will very much appreciate that. And yes, so just so many prayers. I mean, it's just so sad, too. She has such young children. And um, I know somebody who's who has been going through cancer treatments and, you know, they, you know, they talk about how, you know, there's different Facebook groups and stuff and moms who are really young with children. Like imagine having chemo and trying to wrangle toddlers. I mean, uh, it's just so hard. Catherine's children are obviously a bit older, you know, a little bit more self-sufficient. George will be 11 this year. Charlotte will be nine and Louis will be six. So they are pretty self-sufficient, but at the same time, they are still very young and they, they need their mom. And I'm sure they are quite scared and unsure. So, and we also have, um, Nana said, I lived through the engagement wedding of Charles and Diana. The outpouring of immediate love support for William is wonderful. Yes. Mina says, I'm sorry we have such sad news to discuss. I have faith she will get through this. Yes. And hopefully as well, no resurgence or anything. But this is something where she will have to, you know, be monitored throughout the rest of her life for potentially other cancers. So I, I just do feel my heart goes out to her because it's very young to be dealing with something like that. Carrie said, good morning, beautiful people. The Brian clan, good morning, RNN community from Morgan Hill, California. Missy Me says they are so loved. Sandra says, hi, everyone. Anna, let's keep this a hate-free zone. Hazma says, has anybody apologized yet? So we do have Blake Lively, although she didn't mention Catherine. She just said, I feel mortified. It's like, well, you could just also apologize and say, yeah, I got on this train. And that, you know, I think she said best wishes and prayers or something. And she, I felt like she could have at least said Catherine's name. 
Becky says, I'm just glad Princess Catherine had the opportunity to tell her children in a way they could grasp before the news was out to the world. God bless um, you, Catherine, for your strength and perseverance. Yeah, she had to be able to tell her children. And that's hard. I mean, it's hard to tell family members and stuff. And again, I'm sure Catherine and William were dealing with a lot of things and and everything before they got to the point of telling the children. Because that does take time. It takes time to find those words. And you do want to shield your children from some of the things that are going on behind the scenes. Silva says, good morning from South Texas, praying for Her Royal Highness Catherine, the Princess of Wales, and His Royal Highness Prince William as well. Uh, Red Squirrel says, hi, everyone. I hope to get through live without typing and chat freezing. I hope not. Yes. And Carrie says, uh, it's late here in Australia, but could miss, couldn't miss the chance to catch a live. Pity to hear such sad news. Yes. 100%. Hey, Coffee. Hi from Florida. We have Asma Wise Princess Eugenie providing updates on King Charles. I haven't really seen that, but I mean, she just might have been asked a general question and gave a general response. I feel like that's what pretty much everybody's doing, but I haven't personally seen it, so I can't totally attest. Crystal said, praying the Lord Jesus heals both Catherine and Princess of Wales and King Charles. Linda Chapman says, Princess of Wales putting POW into powerful. What a one, what a woman. Yes. Sandra Green says, hi, Red. In case I hope my 10-year-old iPad doesn't turn itself off too many times during the live. Oh, man. Um, you know, technology, it's, it's so wonderful. And then it's just so painfully annoying when it goes wrong. Linda Chapman, she is just so dignified. Yes. Selena, give a tip. Thank you so much. Prayers for Princess Catherine and her family. I'm hoping this sugar stay quiet. Um and leave them alone. Yeah, sadly, I just don't know if that's going to be the case. I've been, oh gosh, I, I didn't even want to want to like know what they were talking about. That Christopher Bosey guy, you know, who runs Spoutable. Apparently they had a Sussex squad meeting on Spoutable. And I'm like, oh, so incredibly sad. I, I don't even want to know totally what they discussed there. Because I just can't see it being good. American woman, thank you so much for the tip. I have been slugging it out on Twitter X since yesterday. So many sl slime balls still attacking the Princess of Wales. I was so angry at these monsters. Yes, I, I do. I do. Th I do see things, and I'm like, okay, come on, people. I, I did have somebody say that Catherine's video was an AI generated. I was like, no, they used a soft focus lens. It probably helped soft, you know, softened her and the atmosphere. And she may have just been feeling down and so she didn't want something that was super hard focus which i totally understand it gave her a softer focus and so it had sort of an ethereal feel in a way and again that's how you shoot certain things and so it was done by the bbc and so because the bbc was there yeah it was it was yeah they should know asma says piers morgan is a hypocrite he is because he's the ones going oh oh we should know more information yada 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 and then all of a sudden he's attacking everybody who attacked Will and Kate. And I was like, well, you're kind of doing the same thing, but I think in my opinion, again, I was all for, they gave us enough information and people who just wanted, were demanding more that they didn't need. Okay. Shaz says, hi, everyone. Hope you're doing well on this sad afternoon. Kimberly says, good morning, everyone. Hey, Brittany. Hello. Nana says, we are truly fans of Princess Wales. She's on model how to deal with the negativity. Yes. Rising above it for sure. Hannah said, good morning from Winter Springs, Florida. K Coffee says, I was so shocked when I got home from work yesterday, got on a live chat and heard the news, got on another live chat, and it was wonderful to be with people who the same felt the same way I did. Yes. Um, Shell uh, says, Eyes of Texas, I'm so sorry for your loss. We have Linda Hay from Richmond, British Columbia. We have Asma. I unsubscribed from Steph, the alter nerd, after her latest live. Um, Mima says, please. Oh, just uh, Linda says Mima. Danny says, please delete the Kate Middleton, the Tedder. You are better than that. And it's it's just something, again, it's just something the general public gravitates to more. Um, and so just is just helps with the algorithm. So Janine says, good morning from rainy Pennsylvania. Sandra says, cold but sunny here in the Netherlands. Becky says, do you think Prince William is taking more time off? The RF is so slimmed down. Camilla and Anne can't handle all the engagements. Yeah, I did notice that because I thought, William still was sort of, it felt like being very slow, dipping his toes back into everything. And I'm like, what's going on? Because it's, you know, 
as she's recovering and yes, she had surgery and we were told it wasn't cancer. And so, you know, at one point she should be able to do most things herself. You know, they, they can have help, but now we understand. And so I, I get it. And yes, that is hard. And obviously this, this is showing the limits of a slimmed down monarchy approach. But at the same time, William does need to be there for his kids, his wife, and he is going to be in the most consistent presence um, to help just steady the home. And so that is needed. That is, that is definitely needed. And so I don't feel any need to push him to get back into things. Patrice says, I read Megan was tossed out some events at the Oscars, the NAAP the event is the other. Is there just nonsense or realities? I think that's most of that stuff I think is just nonsense to be quite honest. I, again, I, I wait for mainstream reports. I think a lot of the things I hear on social media, I, I don't think are, are accurate to the most to in the most it really okay sorry <laughs> thank christina thank you so much for the super sticker this morning i do appreciate it and we have tina as well thank you so much i believe those are danish crones i hope i think um which is always so cool out as i'm kind of debating whether to go to denmark um I, i'm hoping to do catch the scandinavian tour i'm still a little bit on the fence about it but i'm hoping to catch that later this year uh, Stacy says, good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Stacy, the below average turtle. I just say that because I think it's cute. Uh, Laura says, pouring in New Jersey. Malcolm, hello, friends. And we have um, Betty, good morning from Oklahoma. Cheryl uh, Tin from Oklahoma. Pleasantly chilly here in the great state of Oklahoma. Spring can wait its turn. Yeah, we, we did get a little bit of a spring almost summer here a while ago, but now the weather's chillier again, which I'm sort of kind of fine with because I'm not ready for the brutal heat of summer yet. Elaine, Princess Catherine, Becky, Kate Middleton is still her legal name. Yeah, technically that is true. Um, she, her name reflects that of her husband. And so she does not, she can't legally be Mountbatten Windsor. She can't legally be Windsor. She can't, so yeah, it's it's complicated. You have to be a blood Windsor to be certain, blood royal to be certain things. I know that's sort of complicated and seems strange to people, but that that is the case. Uh, Jessica Reed praying for Catherine and the entire royal family. Yes, they need a lot of prayers because this is not easy to go through, especially having a double whammy essentially in the same month. I mean, it's it's just crazy. She says in New Jersey to Southern New Jersey, Sarah shed hello from snow covered St. Paul. Jenna, Joanne Fisher says, good morning, everyone. And Brittany, Laura says I'm in Bergen County and we have Kimberly, the princess of Wales showed bravery, class and dignity. Unlike the rental Royals over in Cali. Yes. Okay. Uh, Nima says she looks so pale. She, she did. I think some of that is the lighting that they used, but she, you could definitely tell she had lost weight. And again, chemo is very, very hard and can make you very, very sick. And so I, I think she is definitely, definitely struggling. So it's, it's just a sad thing to see. Sandra said, I heard a rumor Ro Rose is going to lawyer up. Is this true? I do think she put out a statement. Apparently she did send some sort of legal notice to Stephen Colbert's show, which he deserved. And I know some people are like, but she's a public figure, but she's not. She's a private citizen. She has no relationship with William beyond that of maybe friends, acquaintances. And it's just so cruel what people are doing and how people are spinning things, which is just so unnecessary. Mary M. Good morning from snowy Ontario. Yes. Jenny says hello from Portland. And we have, let's see. Oh, Jane. Thank you so much, Jane. Yes. Heartbroken there. Thank you so much for the tip. And yeah, this is just very heartbreaking. It just seems, again, it's sort of like Diana having an accident so young. It just seems so unbelievably sad in so many ways um, because it's just hard that she's just so young and just also as well seems just so healthy. Kate Coffee says, perfect timing for this Brittany uh, Peggy says, good morning from snowy, but sunny Michigan. Oh, snowy. Oh, goodness. Uh, Crystal says, I vote for the countdown when you have time, Brittany. I also lose, um, them for a few seconds. Yes, I do need a little, um, video thing, but I've been 
so busy trying to do other things. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but I do want to get something together. Lindsay said, good afternoon from Scotland. Kate, good morning from Alabama. We have asthma lawyer send something to Steve Colbert. Yes. On behalf of Roche and tall. Good morning from the Netherlands. I wish Catherine a speedy recovery and privacy. All right. Maggie said morning all teacher Ray. Samantha says, hello, Brittany, just a sad day for us. But I know princess Catherine will make it. She will be a survivor. She will, she will, but this will definitely take time. This definitely is not going to be an easy fix. And so um, it, it's just going to be, I mean, I, I, like I said in my video last night, if you hadn't had a chance to watch it, I really don't think we'll see her consistently and probably till after the fall or sorry, not after the fall, probably in the fall. Uh, Cause she'll go through her treatments. Those will last a couple of months. And then she may do some things here and there as she's sort of building up her strength and sort of getting, cause it's not like you just bounce back and you're, you're fine. Um, she might, you know, need to take some more time to kind of figure things out. So I don't think we'll see her consistently again until the fall. So Stacy says, Captain looked tired and sounded worried with good reason. Yeah, I, I think you could tell she got a bit emotional at times or was trying not to get emotional. So this is just huge news and it's hard. Lorraine says, hi, everyone from Perth, Australia. Kids Relevant says, good morning, Brittany and chat fam. T Grimm says, good morning, all. Does everyone feel as though they have received a punch to the gut? Speedy recovery for Catherine. Yes, I, I think we all sort of feel that because it just, again, seems to have come out of almost left field. You just, you don't quite feel it. Caroline says, um, gave a tip. Thank you so much, Caroline. And we also have Diz fan. I loved how you said that their PR team might not have known and only a few sending my prayers to Princess Catherine and her family during this time. Yes. I really honestly don't think they probably knew until this week. That would be my guess. And again, she's just trying to figure out what treatments look like, how that makes her feel, uh, adjusting with the kids, giving the kids time to adjust, you know, just spending time privately with her family. Obviously, I imagine the King and Camilla knew maybe one of his top aides. And I imagine maybe a top aide within Catherine and William's team, but everybody else probably didn't know. I, I would imagine they probably didn't know. And I, I'm sure Nanny Maria is probably aware. Is probably aware pretty early. And, and it's just hard to share that type of information. And it's just not something you want to necessarily just continue to talk about and sometimes too it's like you just want normalcy so you're just like oh, I, i'm glad this person doesn't know because then i don't have to talk about it or i don't have to feel you know maybe their their sadness or their pity or something and i i can get through my day again i i don't know i don't know um yeah so uh, Jamie says her legal name is Catherine Elizabeth Middleton. We need to refrain from calling her Kate. Need to change the algorithm. It's too confusing. Yes, I, I do think there's, again, it's just, it's just hard when you you are you have a name that becomes known to the public to change that. It just takes time. And because Catherine's name has changed, you could say three or four times from Catherine slash Kate Middleton to the Duchess of Cambridge to the very briefly, the Dutch wash Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge. And then the princess of Wales that all, is also hard for the algorithm because the name changes like, Oh, and so I think the the final change, the one that will be easiest is when she becomes queen. Some will pro still probably call her queen Kate, but once she becomes queen, that'll be the one that's six. Um, I just think because again, yeah, I think that'll just be easier for everyone. Oh, uh, Deborah Fish, thank you, Fetish. Thank you so much for becoming a YouTube member. I'm so glad you have joined our community. And Sandy says, good morning, everyone. Woke up feeling sad this morning. Catherine is strong, brave, and resilient. She will beat this. Yes. And I look forward at some point, maybe her sharing more. But again, I mean, even I said at the time after her surgery, like I look forward when she shares more, but I'm not asking for it. Like it would be nice, but I'm not demanding we need it right now or to others. We have um, Maggie, lots of loves, DJ66, your live light. Oh, thank you. Where is, oh. I disturbed Miss Pippa. Let's see. Oh, yellow daffodils. We'll do yellow in honor of the daffodils Catherine had behind her. Uh, AP says, Good snowy morning from Ontario, Canada. Laura said, yes, I'm so, I feel so sad and depressed over this. Such good people. And they're having such a hard time. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just so sad. 
Sugar Cookie says, good morning, everyone. Oh, uh, K Coffee says, my dog Annie says hi to Miss Pippa and hope Miss P Pippa was comforting you yesterday. She was. She was being a good girl. Right now, she's just sleeping under the desk. I think she likes the desk and she has an Ugg blanket on the floor. I bought Ugg blankets because they're on sale at Bad Bath and Beyond. And I thought they were for me, but she has claimed every single one of them. Every single one. And not that I necessarily blame her, but I also think, but that's my blanket. I paid for it, but she loves them. And so she's asleep on one right now. Stacey says the Prince and Princess of Wales will most likely have Easter privately. Yes. Uh, Red Squirrel says, I only saw the beginning and missed the rest of what happened. So I do not know what's that in reference to. So Theba says, Sandra Gabor at CBS Colbert have been sent a letter a cease and desist letter and demand a public apology of legal action will be taken. Um, yes. And although I will, although I will say defamation is very hard to prove in the States, I think again, this is something that does need to be done because it's like enough is enough. Good jokes, good comedy are based on truth. There is no truth to this rumor. Now, if you are making fun of the rumor, that is fine. But the rumor is totally baseless and unbounded. So it's just ridiculous. Ironically, that was my most liked tweet yesterday. I think it has over 5,000 likes. And all I said was, you know, I wasn't sure if it was true because it was coming from mostly U.S. sources. And I'm always careful about U.S. sources because sometimes they just don't know enough as the U.K. sources. They just don't. Except for when it comes to Harry and Meghan, because obviously Harry and Meghan are here. The rest of the royals. And I just said something to the effect of, well, if she has, it's it's about time. And um, just wanted to say again, there has, there is no affair. There has never been an affair. And that's what I left it. And I was like, it just did really well. And I was like, wasn't expecting that. Uh, Margot said, uh, saddened by the news, but I wasn't surprised. Sounds like they have it under control. Wishing them well. Yes. Missy Lulu says, good morning, beautiful peeps. Continue prayers for the princess of Wales. Bernadette says, well, <laughs> there goes Megan's lifestyle. Um, <laughs> lifestyle news. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, that's sort of interesting, too, because I guess Richard Eden announced or revealed that she's looking for a CEO. And it's like, shouldn't you have a CEO before you launch your brand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alicia, hi, Brittany from Seoul, South Korea. Excited to join you live for the first time. Yay. I have been to Seoul one time. I was there for like 24 hours. And I would like to go back because I missed the opening of the palace by like five minutes. N says, hello, Brittany from Johannesburg, South Africa. It breaks my heart at all the abuse that the Princess of Wales had to endure. Yes, yes, yes. Carmen says, good morning from te Texas. Jenny says, King Charles and Princess Catherine, they are not your pals. I don't know exactly what that's referring to, but I don't think I never thought they were. So Sugar Cookie, a member for seven months, said a lot of the British newscasters were backpedaling. Only one has expressed remorse here in the States. The hypocrites are just holding hat in hand, shuffling their feet. Yes, I just hated sometimes how, again, the whole Omid Scobie thing with his stupid countdown clock. All you need to say is that we have an announcement from Kensington Palace or Buckingham Palace coming at six o'clock. And yes, I understood somewhat the mentality of, maybe setting an alarm clock, but we know partly he's been so incredibly snarky about the, the ineptness in his eye, in his eyes of the Kensington palace PR team and how nobody in the palace liked him and everything that you just read negatively into that. And so, and then people call him on it and he's like, and it's like becomes the titles of news articles and he's like whining and pouting about it. You know, if you just apologize and just said, yeah, that was a stupid decision to make. I just meant for people to know that there was an announcement coming at six. I, I had no clue what it was about. I, I didn't mean anything negative by it. Like that would play so much better than going, oh, the media just twists everything I do. It's like, but you kind of left yourself open to it. That's the thing. That's the thing. So we have Kristen, super sticker, gave a super sticker. Thank you so much, Kristen. And Disfin says, do you think if Harry and Meghan had said something back in January that the bullying would have stopped? With Diana, it was cameras today. It's keyboard. It's a keyboard with Princess Catherine. Oh, I like that comparison, the cameras versus the keyboards. Very true because the paparazzi culture right now just doesn't exist like it did in the 90s and then early 2000s. I was actually watching an interesting Vice series 
sort of on the paparazzi or I think that it was mostly an episode of Lindsay Lohan, but they were talking about the paparazzi and then the rise of TMZ and stuff like that. And th those situations just don't totally exist anymore just because celebrities also have access to social media. So they share and reveal their own news or they say stupid things on it. So you don't even need the paparazzi. Like they'll shoot themselves in the foot. You know, the celebrities will. So, you know, that kind of deadens their industry. And the keyboard warriors too, it is very, very obvious what that entails and how that starts. I don't think Harry and Meghan saying anything would have stopped it. And I don't think Megan would have said anything because she really doesn't care about Catherine. She doesn't care about what Catherine's going to. Everything Megan Markle does is self-serving. She wants to censor the internet because it was mean to her, not because of the actual harm that you could argue that the internet does in some ways. It was damaging to her. That's why she wants to change it. No real other reason. It's all about her own self-serving. And so I don't think she could have done it because I don't think that she she just can't really think of anybody but herself. Like even their statement was so banal and cold. I'm like, golly, do you guys care at all? And then of course we had to get the announcement of they reached out privately and they didn't need to announce that. They really didn't. And it seemed like they got a very muted response because there was nothing they could say. Cause I'm like, I'm sure they sent a text message that either wasn't read or received a muted response going, thanks. We appreciate it. Cause Catherine and William were like, well, we've sort of had to cut Harry and Meghan out. And Harry and Meghan look utterly like the outsiders now. All right. We have Susan. Thank you so much for the tip. When did Meghan develop such a jealousy of the Princess of Wales? Did she start the negativity before she married Harry? And so disappointed in Stephen Colbert. So a couple of different things. So I think this, this is just my theory. And... But I, I, it's based in a lot of what we read. And Megan started the negativity generally with having Harry issue that really nasty statement to the press regarding their relationship and how they were hounding her and everything. Harry opened the salvo by starting everything off on a very, very negative foot. He could have had a statement be much softer than that and it may have had just as much of an impact but what that did then the very much the negativity of that statement put harry and megan on a bad foot with the press like automatically and so that just started a a train that just could not stop somebody was complaining who was i don't know if they're pro sussex or not but misson harryman retweeted it talking about shouldn't this be illegal and it's like dude it's called free speech like get over it but uh, it was this slew of articles, you know, in response to Catherine's diagnosis and everything, calling out Harry and Meghan and in, in various instances. And it's like they sort of started this negativity ball rolling and it pays to be negative about them because they sort of started it. They haven't gotten to the point yet where positive stories sell better than negative stories when it comes to Harry and Meghan. That just doesn't exist at this point. So when it comes to, so everything around Harry and Meghan is toxic and negative. And we see this in essentially all her relationships with everybody she's ever known. They all have an element of toxicity. They all are somewhat negative. And so that just simply exists. But when it comes to, sorry, I just knocked this, the camera again. When it comes to specifically her relationship with Catherine, Meghan, I think, was sort of, of the opinion that her and Catherine could be besties and that she would be on the same footing as Catherine. Cause I think Megan's whole thing is Megan changed her tune entirely about Royal stuff. As soon as she realized she could not be top dog. And I think when she realized that deference would always be given to Kate over her, she was just insanely jealous of that when she found out that just basically in every instance, Catherine would get a better position, more money, more of a clothing allowance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, over her, that's when the insane jealousy really started. And that's not something Catherine can control. She's the princess of Wales. Meghan married the sixth in line to the throne. He was the sixth in line when they married. He's now the fifth, but he will just go further down the line. Yes, you know, depending on when Charles passes, he may go back up to fourth. But once the Wales's kids start having kids, he'll just go you know, he'll start getting into the teens because that's how royalty works. So Harry needs to, I don't know what he needs to do, but just the reality of the situation is, is that 
the, the Harry and Meghan could never compete with Catherine William because Catherine William were going to be the future king and queen. And Meghan thought she could. And then when she realized she couldn't, that's when she really hated the whole system. Margaret Garden says, would you perhaps have the Princess of Wales's address? I would like to write a letter. Perhaps others may feel the same. I did put it at the very end of my video and it is on my Twitter feed. There, there's some discrepancy because I found it from a official, like how do you interact with Royals website? And so they gave me the address, but somebody else was like, oh, send it to Kensington Palace. And I was like, I don't know. So I got it from Der, Der Bretz here. Let me share it. And um, they were the ones who shared it with me. Or there's the ones I got it from. So here is the Der Bretz website. And it looks very official. Like It goes through all the things of how to address the members of the royal family. And so it goes down to the very end. And this is the address it gives for the Prince and Princess of Wales. Obviously, you don't have to do all of that. I would just say Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales. Um, but other people have said it's, I was just going to see, there's no cl even Clarence House address. It could also be Clarence House. It's just very confusing. I feel like they should put that on the Buckingham Palace website, and they don't. And I, I somewhat understand why. But I also don't know. But I will leave this on here for a second while we go to some of our other back over here. Butter Bugs Baked Goods says, just breaks my heart to think of her and her family waiting to see if she has cancer while being bullied. Yes. Yes. And again, if she is getting diagnosed with cancer, she's going to not feel good. You know, she's recovered. It's like, come on, people. Come on. Uh, swims with whales says the palace lied about not being cancerous when it was gaslighting the public again. No, they did not. So what happened was that when the in surgery initially happened, they were probably very strongly hoping and not thinking it was cancer, but like any good physicians, doctors, they decided to go ahead and test whatever tissue they removed. Again, I don't know what it was, but I would imagine they had to have something. So it was obviously some sort of tissue. They removed it, they had it tested, and they did detect cancer. And then they decided on a course of treatment, Catherine decided to wait until she went through her first course of treatment, waited until she could tell the kids, wanted to spend time alone with her family while she processed the news. Remember, she's 42. Most 42-year-old moms are not dealing with cancer. So she wanted to wait, and she has the right to do that. You're not you are you don't have the right to her personal private medical information. You just don't. And she would be able to give that. She should be able to give that when she felt ready. And so I just don't, again, the idea that they lied, they didn't. They just didn't give us some information. Our defense department probably lies to us all the time or your ministry of defense department, whatever. They lie to you all the time. And they do that to protect public safety because there's certain things that you don't need to know because it would just cause chaos or confusion or stuff like that. And in this instance, we didn't need to know because a young woman was trying to process a scary diagnosis. And that is not information that is necessary for you to have at that particular time. She decided when she wanted to reveal it as all patients should. All right. Mary Ann became a YouTube member. Thank you so much, Mary Ann. We have Bracken says, good morning from good afternoon from sunny Wales. Um, AP says, I'm so happy to have a place to come and talk and support one another the day after our princess spoke to us. Afternoon all. TM, this who don't have a conscious, don't feel bad or apologize. Yes. Um, Missy Me says, what uh, Scoby, did, Scoby did was disgusting. It was. It was pretty disgusting. Especially just not apologizing. He should have just apologized. Then crying victim, I just hate that. It's like, you're not. Athena says, I had fol follicular thyroid cancer 10 years ago. That was benign when biopsied prior to having the tumor removed. It was only when pathology had the full mass that was determined to be malignant. Yes, yes. It was only after that point that it was, because sometimes they just don't know. They didn't get the right piece of tissue. And so they're thinking it's benign. And then it's really not. And so I just think people should just, like, let some of that go. It, it's complicated. It's long. They have to go through a lot of different things. You have to go through all the options. I'm sure once you got the official diagnosis, they wanted to do more scans and tests before they moved forward. And she had to heal from surgery. I mean, come on. It's not lying. It's not telling you everything because you don't need to know. 
Jeff says that disgusting message from Harry and Megan, not even calling her by her given name. They shouldn't be bothered if they, it was so disgraceful. Yes. Uh, so Pis Pis Pisco Castillo says, I'm trying to cope with the news and staying positive. Brittany, do you believe Megan Brooke are going to take advantage of the Princess Catherine of absence? I keep praying. Uh, I would say yes. Yeah, she probably will. Um, Megan just can't help herself. She just can't. And she's probably somewhat, I don't, I wouldn't say that, but um, she needs to launch this lifestyle brand. Of course, she bungled the, the launch. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Mima says, should we call her Princess Catherine? How should every, how would you like everyone calling the King, King Chuck? Yes. Uh, and it's Catherine with this C, not a K. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I mean, technically she's, she's not a princess in her own right. So she's not technically Princess Catherine. I know it's very complicated because other royal families do things differently, but yeah, she's not a princess in her own right. Some royal families that does happen, but in this, in the Brits case, it doesn't. And it was the same thing with Princess Diana when they called her. Um, um, she was technically Diana, the Princess of Wales. She was never Princess Diana. Again, complicated how the British work. Butterbug's Base Good says she's the picture of class, elo eloquence, and grace. Tr truly queenly. Yes. Stacey, the below average turtle, said, You're a tough lady, Athena. Yes. And I hope you are feeling much, much better. Deborah says, Hi, all from South Carolina. So, um, Red Skull, she kept badgering the doctor about what the prognosis and they look in uncomfortable answering it. She kept speculating on what cancer Catherine has. Yeah, which I won't do. I won't speculate on it. Again, I can just say generally based on my family and, and, and experience with cancer and what I know is that obviously she's going through treatments, what that means and stuff, but I won't ever speculate on what cancer she has. I'll go based on the information we have and what's generally known about how cancer treatments go, but I am not going to make any speculation about what cancer ha she has. When she wants to let us know, she'll let us know. If she doesn't want us to know, she may not let us know. Kate Coffee says, I think it was a great parenting to wait and make the announcements until the kids were on break. Yes, yes. And it and it avoided perhaps a nosy paparazzi trying to stalk the children as they went to school. So TM says, one YouTuber I tried to reason with ignored me and gleefully published trashy gossip about the Princess of Wales yesterday. Yes. So guys, I, I just, um, I always had the thing where I don't share information unless I'm pretty sure it comes from a decent source. So I don't share general gossip stuff. I only share like mainstream news reports generally. Um, and if it's not, if it's something like from Closer Magazine, I will always say I don't really agree with the source here, but this sort of makes sense. You'll probably notice I do say that. Brittany, can you give Asima a spinner so we can kick out the sugars out of here, please? Oh, no. Okay. I'll have to go down and get out the sugars. Just ignore them, too. They just want to rile things up. The best thing to do with the sugar always and then forever is just to simply ignore them. Um, they're just wanting to have attention. And so less you give that to them, the better. Uh, Liz E says prayer for the kids, first grandpa and now mommy. That is a rough thing at such a young age. It is, especially for the kids. I'm sure to them, it's just like very, like, they just don't even know what to do. And they're just like, I don't know what to do. You know, it's just scary because there's just so much going on and they obviously have great support in terms of their, their parents, their grandparents and everything, but it's just a huge, huge thing. Um, so yeah, it's just so, so sad. It's just so sad. Um, Oh, Becky says, and this is, I went down to the the post in case I, I need to block somebody. Uh, Becky says, I never wear jewelry at home. Yes. I know some people got really fussed about Catherine and somebody on Twitter made the fuss. I was like, oh, Catherine's ring is back. Well, you know, if she was at her home and she was feeling uncomfortable that day and she just wanted to have her ring off, like, I don't blame her. She's in the comfort of her own home. She doesn't have to wear it all the time. She doesn't want to. Now, again, it's different between Catherine not wearing it one single time and Catherine wears hers all the time. And it's, it's big, so she might take it off for some things just because she doesn't want it to get dirty or damaged or anything. And she is at home with the kids and stuff. You know, perhaps she didn't want to on at that particular moment. But Megan not wearing her ring for an entire year is just a little bit different. Uh, 
Linda says, I'm with you, Britt. Kate Middleton isn't offensive. She answers to it as she does to Catherine. Yes. Uh, I mean, some people have said she doesn't really, really like it. But again, it's just kind of, you know, it's it's one of those things where that's just how you become known. It's kind of better to um, just better to do things. So, yeah, some people are read too much into things <laughs> um so yeah we have debbie says we have three royals diagnosed with cancer sarah ferguson king charles and princess Catherine. yes poor sarah ferguson breast cancer and then skin cancer that is that is rough so we'll go through here <laughs> yeah a lot of trolls if you are Seeing somebody who's posting just very negative or awful things, you can always use those little three dots in the corner and block the user. And if not people do that, then they will go ahead and be blocked. So so we have Babette says, who says, yes, testing takes time. It took a friend two months of testing to rule out breast cancer. Yes. And sometimes, too, I think Olivia Munn, who also got recently diagnosed with or announced that she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And why is nobody giving her trouble for... I think she kept it to herself for at least six months to a year. Why is nobody freaking out about that? <laughs> because people have the right to do things privately if they want to. I don't fault her for that at all. I don't fault her for that at all. So KT says, many tweets said RF is paid by the taxpayers. They are entitled to know her info. I rolled my eyes hard. You, I mean, you get paid by your employer. That logic should say they get access to your info. Yes. Yes. And it's just a way to be just, she's entitled to keep some things private. She gives up so much, really, when you think about it. She gives so much. Like, who wants to walk out at, right after giving birth to a, just a line of press and paparazzi and get your picture taken when you're exhausted and you're tired and you just had a new baby and it's just, everything's just, yeah, and your body's just out of whack and stuff. Nobody wants to do that, but why does she do that? Because that's sort of required. And so it's it's just one of those things where it's just good to let people have their privacy when they need it. It's not like she's asking for it all the time. It's just like this one time she's like, I I need to, I I need to, I need to do my own thing. I need to relax and stuff. Okay. Hey, Coffee says, if it was like my surgery, they were 99% sure it wasn't cancer. Unfortunately, with Catherine, she was the 1%. Yes, they don't ever know sometimes until they know. Uh, Maureen says, I found her speech incredibly brave and it is devastating. It had to get to this stage of her having to reveal her private medical diagnosis to the world. Yes, I know a lot of people are making comments about how that she, you know, was sort of forced into this. And it, it, that's somewhat true. But again, I will say because of the timeline that they had initially given for her return, she obviously can't do that now. And so she does have to let the world know that she, she's not going to be back for a bit. And so that's that's what's what it's going to happen. Uh, Katie says the shock needs to be dealt with first. And then the children need to be spoken to the media has been brutal. Yes. Yes. Again, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Uh, they need to be able to tell the kids in their own way, tell the family members they deem it's appropriate to tell. I'm sure some of the extended Royal family, family members may have known like Zara, uh, Tyndall and her husband. I would imagine they might've known maybe Peter Phillips, like, you know, a couple of family members are exceptionally close to, but I think they kept this very close to the chest because they didn't want it to get out at all. And like I said in my in my video, loose lips sink ships. And you got to think too is that even if somebody has the best intentions, what if they just accidentally say it in a moment where they're just not thinking or saying, "Oh, we got a plan X," and "Oh, yeah, Catherine," you know, things can happen and people can reveal things that they just don't mean to reveal. So it totally happens. American woman, a member for five months. Thanks for posting the mail address for the Princess of Wales. Yes. Brandtastic says, I don't think an American is cut out to be a royal. They don't understand that what the monarchy represents, the history, the duty, their egos and self-entitlements are way too big. Megan is all that and more. Yes, an American prayers for Catherine. I don't totally agree with that. 
Uh, Because we did have some royals very graciously from America enter royal families. You think of Grace Kelly and Princess Kelly. Of um, So you have Grace Kelly, who became Princess Grace, and actually a woman named Princess Kelly, because her name is Kelly, and she married into the the house of saxe Goldberg gotha And so she is originally from Pensacola, Florida. And so she married into the royal family, as far as I can tell. I mean, it's a very, you could call it a minor family within the grand scheme of things. She only goes to some of the major royal events. And I think there are opportunities, of course, for for royals who are Americans, but, or Americans who become royals, but, but I think Hollywood in some instances can get, be an issue. And Megan was just the worst type of a person really to marry in because she is, she was a, a Hollywood actress, always desperate for fame and fortune. And her desperation is, is like huge. It was always huge, always existed. It wasn't going to go away. And so that is, that is just how, um, so that is just how things go. Um, so she was just always going to be problematic. She just always was. She is too selfish to see the, the beauty of the monarchy. So, oh, we have, oh, Cindy, thank you so much for the super sticker. That is so sweet this morning. I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Um, that is, that is wonderful. Thank you. Becky says, do you think Harry was made aware that princess Catherine had cancer when he visited Prince Charles? No, uh, Catherine might not have known at that point. And the reports indicate as far as we're aware, they did not know cat. They didn't know Catherine had cancer until she, they basically the announcement. So they were told maybe five minutes before, maybe. Uh, VS says, good point, Brittany. We'll likely see the Princess of Wales in the fall because she has to rebuild her immune system as well. Time will heal and we'll see and we'll all meet again soon. Sound familiar? Yes. Oh, gosh. Joy Day says, someone posted yesterday that cancer lasts one year, but a miscarriage and depression lasts the last time. Can you get any lower than that? No, not really. Not really. Uh, Jocelyn says, I started crying during the speech. My sister had a very hard time with chemo. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, Nelly says, Brittany, turn your live light on. I did. I did. Uh, Chantel says, why am I already seeing articles in the press that about Harry and William reconciling? Why put that extra pressure on William? Unfair. And it will never happen. They called Kate a racist. Yes, it, it definitely will not happen. It definitely will not happen. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Um, oh, Cindy says there is a real difference with your new mic setup. The sound is great. Love your channel. Why? Thank you. Why? Thank you. I spent a lot of money for this silly mic. So I'm hoping it was well. So it was just one of those things, um, that I just thought, especially as I was going to do the podcasting and everything. And it is just one of those things where I just wanted something that sounded really good. And once it sounds really good, it will just continue to be better and better. And so, yeah. And I love this setup too, because I can actually move this mic out of my way or move it back. So it's kind of nice. I don't have to, because before I had to like do this whole setup and everything and I have my lights stationary. So if anytime I need to, I can just come in here, turn the lights on and go and do a video, which is awesome. So fire elemental says, I think one of the hardest things is, um, when I'll, I, I'll, I think one of the hardest things when I'll, I'm comforting is others is about your illness. Sometimes you just don't have it left energy left in you that you need it for yourself to get through the day. Yes. Uh, little Annie says chemo reduces immunity during each cycle, but usually not long term. You just need to be careful mixing with large groups or people who are ill. Yes. Cause I know when I had family members with cancer, they didn't, they, they weren't home all the time, like COVID or something. They got out and they did things, um, especially, uh, you know, family members would go to church. And yes, usually the first week they wouldn't go, but that was more to do with feeling ill than not, than being all that worried about immunity. Like if I had a family member with cancer and I was sick, I would, I would not interact with them. I would, I would stay home and, and let them do their thing. But I know, you know, people with cancer, they get out and they do things. They're not totally just staying at home. Uh, 
Uh, Laura says, sweet William, I hope he leans on the Middletons for support. He's going through so much. Yes. Uh, 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 so me, so so me says Colbert is a total jerk for doing that. I hope <laughs> Rose sues the pants off him. Disgusting. Giles is garbage for tweeting it. Yeah, I think so. I do like to say American woman says my 11 year old dog Annie is full of the joy of the spring and she's trying right now to get me to play frisbee with her. Oh, Annie wants to play frisbee. Um, cause we do need our dogs too. And I know some people were talking about, well, William looked like he was happy at certain things. And the thing is, though, you do need to have moments of joy. You can't constantly be in this like shadow rain cloud of, oh my gosh, I got cancer and this is so terrible for me. And because positive attitude actually does make a huge difference. It, it really does. At the end of the day, it really does to make a huge, huge difference to be, to have a positive attitude uh, throughout, you know, regardless of the traumas, and everything. Uh, Indra Deepa says, hi, Brittany from Mumbai, India. I love your royal commentary, especially as you are so objective with the entire commentary. Looking forward to you sharing deets from your Scotland trip. Yes, I enjoy sh I'll enjoy sharing that. We do still have spots available if anybody's interested in signing up. I'm so excited for that. And it'll be just a great time to be there in Scotland. We're, we're probably there at one of the perfect times, although it's probably going to be obviously one of the height of tourism times. But it's going to be really great. I'm so excited. So I can't wait for everyone to join. Shaz says, this is why William didn't go to the memorial service for his godfather and the cult minions were saying it was something different. I won't say what, but they're disturbing for sure. Yes. We knew it was something. And again, I was like, what is this? Because it just seemed to be somehow connected to Catherine because connected to the kids didn't totally seem to make sense unless like one of the kids was really sick. But then again, they have a nanny. I was like, so what's going on? But if it was Catherine's first real chemo treatment, it would, it would, it would take a while. Oh, Dar Darlene says, it feels like they are, wa our family watching them all growing up, love and healing to the Royal family. Yes. Uh, Missy me says, I absolutely love the special bond between the King and the princess of Wales. Yes. He calls her my beloved daughter-in-law. I don't think he uses the same describer with Megan and it's because they're close. They're close. And so it's just one of those things. Uh, Dawn says she looked tired, pale, and very thin. Never expected this. Yeah. I mean, I do like, you could just tell that it, it was already starting to take its toll, the treatment. And they may have given her a higher dose because she's younger and she can, she can take it. And I know somebody was mentioning too, and I asked somebody who has had a lot of experience with cancer and although they removed whatever the problematic element was, that they are still doing treatment tells you, you know, this was, this was serious. Uh, this was pretty serious. Um, so yeah. Patricia says, good morning, Brittany. The King of the Netherlands needs to apologize. Yes. I, I, <laughs> I definitely heard that he did sort of a improper joke that now looks in very poor taste right now. It's just it, oh, Wilhelm best not to make, like I didn't make fun of it. Cause it's like, do I have probably my own? I actually was thinking yesterday about posting pictures that I did where I increased the, the blue in the picture, which actually makes diamonds look better when you increase the blue. And so I had increased the blue in the pictures and the diamonds and stuff were sparkling better in pictures I had taken. And so I was just like thinking to myself, like, should I post these and just make fun of people who are like fussing about things? Um, because it's just so silly at the end of the day. And it was just so unnecessary for people to pile on. Um, I, and I was just going to make... Um, fun of other people making fun of ridiculousness is kind of my idea. Uh, so Marjorie says, good morning, Brittany prayers and love for the RF. She's been a member for four months. Thank you. Jane says, whatever happened to the first microphone that was delivered to your neighbors? Okay. So this is it. So this microphone was delivered to my neighbors technically. And so, uh, cause it had been put in, we have like, you know, a, a mail center, this is the best way I guess you can describe it. So we have all these boxes and then there's little things where you can put your, your mail and, or where they put your mail and then they give you a key to a bigger box where they put the boxes. And so they had put this microphone in one of those boxes. And so I went down to get it, but the key wasn't in my box. And so I was like, well, crap, somebody could get into there and they could feel totally, totally like they could take this because it was in their box, like kind of, 
not really, but addressed to them. And so I waited for the mail carrier. Thank goodness I did because I talked to her and I told her, and then she was looking in the boxes going, it ain't here. And I'm like, well, then what are you going to do? Cause I was like, it's a $500 mic. It's, it's not a cheap mic. Um, cause you know, oftentimes you do have to pay for quality of certain things. And so I was just asked her and then she went to my neighbors, knocked on their door and yes, they had it. She had put it in the wrong box and they had opened it and they had not come by to return it when they probably knew it wasn't theirs. So yeah, that was, that was the situation. So I did get it back, but I wasn't, yeah, it was, it was, it was dicey there for a minute. <laughs> Lady Aviator says, my dad was diagnosed with prostate cancer last year. The wait time for news on prognosis and treatment hung like a black cloud over us for weeks. Awful feeling. Understand why the RF waited. Bless her. Yes, it, it hangs over you. You don't know what to do. And even parents, you know, I'm sure it took them a while. They, they, they wanted a course of treatment. They wanted to know what the future looked like before probably they even told the kids. This is something I'm sure Catherine and William were dealing with mostly privately. I'm sure her parents probably knew probably her si siblings. They may have told Charles and Camilla, but they may have not wanted to overload them with this additional burden. So they may not have even told them. And so, again, so much going on here and so much just sadness in the situation, for sure. Um, it's, it's, it's hard. It's rough. American Woman says, gifted for 10 Royal News Network's memberships. Oh, my gosh, guys, I cannot think sometimes. Thank you so much. You are so, so sweet. We do appreciate it. I know people love them. And, yeah. Little Annie says, no rumor re-rose was started by the tabloids after they said there had been a falling out. Giles Corden made a drunken tweet, but later said it was only a joke. Yes. And somehow it's gotten way, way too out of control. Way too out of control. Olga says, what do you think the future is for all the new ventures, projects Harry and Meghan were planning on launching? I don't know. Because obviously they have the problem as well as if they do too much, they'll be criticized for capitalizing on the misery of the family. But at the same time, they also got to make money. Not saying that they don't have to do that. Uh, they leave, They live in a very exorbitant lifestyle. And so, yeah, that's what they have to do. So, I don't know. Adia says, oh, thank you so much. Agree. Positive attitude helps. Humor helped me, my husband, and kids battle breast cancer. Cancer affects the whole family. It does. And also, you know, the comfort and joy of pets to help. But yeah. Positive attitude helps laugh, live your life. Yes, sometimes it's it's debilitating and you can't. There's certain things you just can't do. But as much as you can go out and do things and stuff like that, do them. Because if you live it under this cloud of you know misery, it, it will affect you. It will affect you. So um, that's just my for for what it's worth. That's just my my thoughts. Uh, Boho Chic says became a YouTube member. Why? Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you were able to join. Oh, SCJ says, Michigan here too, Brittany. We had some inches of snow, but roads were just wet, thankfully. Oh, goodness. I, I haven't had snow this year, and I am fully, fully okay with that. <laughs> uh, Millie uh, says, I am appalled. What I'm appalled is about Omen's reaction. Apparently, Press knew what the announcement was. It's distasteful and very, very unsympathetic. Then he asked for it. Yeah, so I think the thing to, to not to be his defender, but to say in context, I think what he, he, he knew an announcement was coming because apparently I missed this because somehow these announcements always happen when I'm at lunch or I was like grocery shopping yesterday. I actually found out about it while I was in the middle of the car wash. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, and then my, my mom called me like almost immediately because they know um, what I do and everything. So um, to, to be fair, I don't think he knew the specifics of the announcement. But what he knew was when it was coming. So he had heard that, but he hadn't heard specifics. I believe, this again is just my, my thought, because of the sensitivity of this issue, this press announcement was given to the highest ranking royal reporters within the royal rota. So like, probably Richard Palmer. Um, oh gosh, there was a new woman at the times of London. And I can't remember her name right now. So she's kind of the replacement for Valentine Lowe and whoever, um, oh gosh, I, I think of their Twitter handles, but I can't totally think of their names. I can kind of see there. Um, and so I, I think that 
he was aware that the announcement was coming, but he wasn't aware of the content of it. And obviously it looked really bad when the, the details of the announcement came out. But again, my issue with him is, is like, yeah, you did something stupid. Admit you did something stupid. Don't blame the press for concocting negative narratives when you're the one who started it. It's called taking responsibility. Oh, Rhonda said, praying for you, Brittany. You are doing a great job. Why, thank you. I do appreciate that. I really, really do. I really do. Because sometimes it's it's weird because you get so many weird things from people that you're just like, don't know. Are you, are you being helpful? Or are you just being mean? Like, I get so many things like people. Uh, yeah, I feel like you get you get things from all sides and you don't know what to do with them sometimes. Um, Angie Jr. says, Hey, Brittany, it's been a long time. It's been a while since I joined these chats. My prayers and warm thoughts are with Catherine and the RF from Japan. I believe that is. Oh, thank you so much, Ange. I'm so glad you were able to join. Uh, Jennifer says, again, as a cancer survivor and knowing many others also, it's not common to lose weight during chemo. It's just like the rest of the horrible treatment. Um, Love from the mountain state. Yes, it depends um, what you do. I know somebody who went on sort of a a very, very clean diet and they did end up losing actually quite a bit during the chemo process. Again, it depends on the chemo. Um, but I think the stress, obviously she had surgery too. So recovering from that. Uh, A.E. Dell says, let's mass report. Tisa. Okay, so let's... Um, I just, don't get too much. Any. Jonathan and Tara Palmer, seeing all the love and support for Catherine, I'm willing to bet a certain sister-in-law will also announce an illness in a few short months. Yeah, it's um, I, this feels weird to say, but yeah, there's no competing with what's going on with Catherine right now. There's just, there's just not. Uh, Missy, Miss Always Right Ryan says, as a two-time cancer survivor at the age of 45 with three kiddos too, I understand her waiting to keep it private for the time being. Yes. Thank you. And thank you so much for sharing for the tip as well. I think that is so important to know is that there are three little kiddos here and I hope you are doing well. sounds like you are a survivor, which is wonderful, but yes, this is, this takes time. It's, it's a process. You don't want to share all the details immediately. You want to take some time, you know, be with your family. Again, the whole process is, this is not something that happens automatically. And I think people need to respect that a bit more. Uh, Teresa became a YouTube member. Thank you so much. We also have, I am never wrong. I had stage three rectal cancer at 43. Yes. They give high dose is with chemo at that age. And my twins were four. I know exactly how she feels. She deserves rest now. Well, thank you so much for sharing for the tip. I really do appreciate it. And I appreciate you sharing your story too, because being a similar age, it, you know, you know how that feels like, cause it's just hard. It's just hard. And I don't feel like people appreciate that as much as they should, that recovery takes time and telling people something like this, you know, sometimes people might not tell people cause they just, they don't want to tell. And so it's, um, yeah. Oh, sugar. He says, Oh my goodness. On my discord. I just found out a member is a sugar. So disappointed. That's always hard. I think sometimes too, when you think, Oh, you're my friend. And then they're not. <laughs> Um, I've, I've had that sometimes that in, um, you know, online and doing what I do, I feel like, oh, they're nice. And then they like pile on with everybody else on something. And it's like, well, yeah, uh, I think the stress that Meghan Markle added to the royal family did not help for the past few years. She heaped so much stress on them. Yes. And I agree. I, I won't, you know, go too far with that, but the stress definitely didn't help. And so Harry and Meghan were like, Oh, we contacted them. I'm sure Catherine and William were like, stay away. <laughs> and I don't bless, blame them. Oh, come on. Okay, this type of comment is a comment I will just block. Sorry. I just can't, I can't deal that with that. Um, I just, I've been doing that a lot on Twitter too. I just hide comments that are just saying, repeating some of the wild and crazy theories because it's, it's not, it's, it's just not. It's no. Oh. Uh, Maggie Rayner says, carry on Brit. I regularly use Catherine as she prefers it, but in casual conversations, I do say Kate. Yes. It, it's just, again, one of those things that just becomes part of our psyche and, and part of the system. And so it will change. But again, I think 
the full change will happen when she becomes queen. Once she becomes queen, the full change will happen. But it's just it's just hard. It's also length too, because what do you say? Yeah, uh, in the titles. Yeah, and this is also part of it. Brittany needs to make money from YouTube if we want to keep her available to us. She has to use the algorithms that are successful. Yes, that is true too. Um, and I, I will say it's not only that, but more of if you've never edited a video, it takes a long time. And it's it's frustrating sometimes when things don't do well. And I sometimes wonder if that's the title or something else. And so that's why I do put that in there because it's just easily the best way I can ensure that it gets to the most people by using both names. Um, it just kind of, it's just kind of how it is. And Catherine, the princess of Wales, that that's a really, really long name to put. I only get a hundred characters in a title and you want to get, you know, all the keywords in there. So when people are searching, your stuff comes up. So it is, it is one of those, it's, it's one of those things. It's one of those things. Carrie says, question, do you imagine Megan is secretly jealous of Catherine because of the outpour, pouring of support she's getting now? Probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, and like, and now here you and Megan are in a really tough spot. I, I do admit they're in a tough spot. They can't do nothing because people will get mad at them for doing nothing. If they say something, people get mad at them for that. But again, I feel like their, their statement could have been so much better than it was. Again, I feel like we've seen better comments from people who met them once or twice than Harry and Meghan. That's that's not a good look. That's not a good look. Um, and so it it is one of those things where I think, yeah, there is probably some secret jealousy going on there. I mean, there's been jealousy all along, um, but it's, it's just so silly to me because it's like it's something they can't help. It's like we always knew this was going to be the case. It's like, again, it's like she's shocked by the hierarchy and it's like, well, the whole point of a royal family is that it's a hierarchy. You went to Northwestern. Like, you're supposed to be smart. <laughs> so, um, as 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 Zanian says, Catherine was bullied into revealing her health diagnosis. I, again, I think yes and no. Like I said, I think she was getting to the point where she had to say something. But I do think all the speculation definitely maybe sped up the timeline. They may have done it next week, right before Easter. But also, too, she needed to film it. So, And they did go to Amner Hall. So this might have been just the perfect time. The kids were out of school. They had a little bit of time to film it before they went to sort of their northern sanctuary. Farrell Amanda says it's incredible how many folks were engaged now that in Catherine's illness, wishing her well, sad for her folks that never really watched this royal stuff. Her popularity is off the charts. Prayers. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. A hundred percent. Catherine says, good morning from Murfeesbo, Murfeebo, Murfeesbo, Tennessee. There's a chill in the air this morning. Yes. Yes. Uh, so we do have here a couple other um, things here. We have GL Hunter nine, one of our members. Thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. We got fire elemental as well. Thank you so much. Another member. And we have Siba for the DSM five TR inability to feel empathy is a mental illness. Yeah. I don't think they're very empathetic. Again, I'm, I'm really surprised how cold their comment was. And this, I think might be the, you know, the slipping more towards the hippy dippy that they are. And, you know, obviously to each their own, but Harry obviously was baptized in the Church of England and so was Megan. And, you know, you could say prayers or something that our prayers, our thoughts and prayers are with you. And I know that's a cliche and I know it's overdone, but like, if you really, if you really want to, you know, offer prayers for somebody, offer them. Um, but just don't think they do that. Marcel loves uh, very sad news about the Princess Catherine and the family. My prayers go out to them. And we have Vanessa. Hey, Brittany. Hello from Texas. I've been processing the sad news and praying for Catherine and her sweet family. Maggie AZ says, uh, I could not believe it when I heard about the Princess of Wales. Terrible news. Yes, it was very terrible. I was just so surprised. Um, Tanya said, Megan, sorry, Blake's phony apology was pathetic. She focused only on herself. She didn't say sorry, only mentioned how she felt. It wasn't an apology at all. Yes, I would, I would say that too. Um, so I did share an address, but I'll share it again. 
just in case. Uh, this is what I got from Der Brett's, like an official London, you know, how to communicate with the king and family and stuff. So um, I have heard too, it's, it's Clarence house, but yeah. Uh, so Chris Overby says, so grateful for the King's message of support to my beloved daughter-in-law. Yes, 100%. Sugar Cookie says, only one British broadcaster had apologized on his show last night. He owned up to him adding to the nonsense. Yes, I just think it's crazy how many people just kind of piled on to this ridiculousness. It's it's so obvious. It's so obvious. Like, it's just so ridiculous like they gave us a timeline it's not easter like why why are you piling on to this stupid where is kate nonsense you all know where she is she's in windsor come on now obviously now she's in amner hall but which is at norfolk and sandringham Uh, Joanne, Joanne Smith said, just joining, do you think the London clinic breach has forced Catherine's hand? And is this why she's releasing her medical info? I don't think so. It sounded like there was an attempted breach, not that they actually got access to the material. And again, we don't know for sure. We really don't know, but I do think that they did, were trying to get access to the information, but it was all protected. Like only probably her highest ranking doctor had, actual access to the file, maybe his assistant or something. And again, if you breach that information, like all those people who tried should probably be fired because there is no reason for you to attempt to do that. Obviously they're doing an investigation, so we may know more, but at this point, yeah. Uh, Mary says, I think the Princess of Wales, Catherine, would have told the public in due time. I feel like she came out before she was ready because of the lies and speculation and sane theories. Again, I, I can see both sides. There's, um, they kind of had to do something at some point. William, Prince William and Queen Camilla are more amazing to me now than they were just two days ago. Carrying on. Yes. Yes. Which I think is is brilliant. Which is brilliant. Uh, uh, Missy Lulu says all the stuff at Bucky Kenzie and Palace love and worship William and Catherine. I can't imagine being blamed for the devilish mainstream media attacks on the royal family. Well, I think they love William and Catherine. I, I think worship is a bit far, but I think they do uh, love and appreciate Catherine and William. And I think again, it's very, very lovely for Catherine again to not throw her staff members under the bus. Cause this is what I'm wondering what happened with the picture is that again, the staff members don't really know what's going on. We know Prince William took the picture. And so he probably took the picture and she was like, well, let's, you know, make it look a little bit better. Maybe she was feeling like she didn't look her best or she looks a little bit different than she wanted to, or she wanted to adjust with the kids and she did it and they didn't really run it by their staff and they just posted it. So it's, it's sort of, it's terrible, but it's also a good lesson for them to learn. So it's just, it's just hard. Heather gave a super sticker. Thank you so much, Heather. I do appreciate it this morning. Oh my goodness, this live is going by so quickly. So quickly. So. So Fire Island must said, why in the world did it take so long for this cancer diagnosis? Sorry, but their medical care is suspect coupled with the surprise of Charles appearing not that competent. Um, that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes um, I think Olivia Munn had to be like, tested several times before they actually finally found her breast cancer. And I'm sure with Catherine, they were like, they maybe took a, a, a piece of tissue and they tested it. And that particular piece of tissue did not have cancer cells in it. And sometimes really you only know once you open people up and get in them, that, that sounds kind of crude, but, but that's the truth. You, you really tests outside tests can only show you so much. Uh, they are making some adjustments or, um, um, improvements with that. I know there was a test regarding MRI machine that could do the function of basically a biopsy, but um, a particular biopsy, but um, sometimes there's only so much you, you can do and it, it takes time. And really like when it came to um, I, you know, I, I broke my foot and my wrist and yes, the doctors, physicians, when they went into surgery, they had a plan for what they were going to do based on the x-rays, but they really didn't totally know until they opened me up. Actually, actually interesting note. So I had carpal tunnel in my hand. And so as they opened me up and they were working on me, they noticed my carpal tunnel and they fixed my carpal tunnel. 
<laughs> and so I had like stitches right here in my palm, like a couple ones that I wasn't expecting to have because again, they didn't know about this other issue until they opened me up. And so again, you don't know until they, 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 go on with the medical procedure. And the purpose of the surgery was in part is to address this problematic area that they noticed to get it out and to be able to look at it under the microscope and determine whether or not it was cancer. And they do have a couple of days. And I'm sure when you're thinking about such a high profile patient too, you, you get in there and you want to make sure, okay, do we have anything, everything right? Do we know what stage it is? What, what the malignancy is, what, what the cancer is and everything like they probably don't tell them immediately. They need probably a day or two themselves as medical experts to go through and go, okay, we see this and this and this let's, let's go here. So again, um, I, I think, it, it does take time. It's not a one and done thing. I think some people think that they're like, oh, you know, they kind of think it's like house or Grey's Anatomy or whatever. It's like, no, no, no. This, these things do take time. Sugar Cookie gifted five Real News Networks membership. So I thank you so much, Sugar Cookie. And we also have Gretchen One. Gretchen became a YouTube member. Why thank you, Gretchen or Gretchen I? I, I kind of think that was kind of like one, like a royal title. <laughs> Okay, this is this is a good joke, Wendy. I do admit. Who are you rooting for in the March Madness? If you guys don't know, March Madness is the college basketball tournament to ter determine who is the best college basketball team of the particular year. And the answer is the only royal team I could find is Duke. <laughs> There's Duke University in North Carolina. They're well known for being a good, uh, overall a good basketball team. So that that is a good joke. I do have to admit that it's a good joke. Becky said, wasn't there a rumor someone trying to access Catherine's medical records? Do you think that's what led to her announcement? Yeah. Well, yes, they have three people apparently were trying to access it after she had left the hospital. Once really the speculation kind of went into overdrive, apparently is when they tried to access it. These people are under investigation. I imagine they have been relieved of duties while the investigation is going on. But in the United States, I don't know what you guys have in the UK, but in the US, we have something called HIPAA, which means that you cannot share personal medical information. It's it's protected. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be... Um, they, they're going to be under investigation. They could face some fear, pretty serious either fines or reprimands or maybe even jail time. I'm not sure. K Coffee says, Brittany, do a video on how the royals get funding. My understanding is that the Sovereign Grant pays for state visits, maintaining buildings Britain owns, but is the but it's the duchies that pay for the rest. Yes. I would love to do more of these videos. I probably need to hire. Um, and I've been kind of debating it, hiring somebody like, because I can film one of those type of videos and then I can like do all the other stuff. And so that is kind of what I am um, thinking of doing maybe because I, I there's evergreen content like this I would love to do. I just don't get the time to do it. And I do also have a video that I filmed and recorded and finished editing yesterday. And I let it sit because I was like, oh, I want to get some food and I'll, I'll do the thumbnail and everything later for the fashion channel for kind of TR Tuesday, which will now move to be TR Thursday. And the news of Catherine broke and I didn't feel comfortable posting it, but I'll probably post it today. So Stephanie Barrett says, hi, Brittany from Hobart, Tasmania, Australia here, 1, 10 a.m. I'm concerned but optimistic for my princess and I hope she feels all the love decent people around the world are expressing for her. Yes, I hope she tunes out. I hate to say it, but this is the best descriptor. I hope she tunes out the crazies and just finds comfort in those she loves and her staff and team members as well. Hannah says, why do you think someone tried to get the Princess of Wales records, but not the Kings? Because Catherine's like whole situation was blowing up. It was around the time of the Where is Kate thing really went into overdrive and the photoshopping and everything. Um, that's when that happened. Uh, Nana says, Brittany always has such an excellent perspective. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. Ritz says, the princess is in no way obligated to reveal what type of cancer seriously people need to get a life. Yeah, she's not under any obligation to reveal it. Again, uh, I imagine maybe she will at some point. But yeah, Missy Me says, loving the t-shirt. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. Oh, a sweet baby sleeping at my feet. She's probably wondering what all the fuss is about. Um. So I'm going to another section of the chat because I kind of bounced around this time. So hopefully, 
Blue, uh, Blue Blurple Dragon said they only made the statement to not get um, bad about. Probably. Yeah. Um, if this is about Harry and Meghan, uh, that could be. Yeah. Uh, they, they again, they're in a tough spot. They're darned if they do, darned if they don't. People would be calling for them to make a statement, yet people also don't really want to hear their statement. But at the same time, they do need to make it. So it's just, again, not great. Gretchen says, Megan didn't understand that being royal is about duty, honor, country, succession, order, and not to get a free Hermes bag. Yes, Megan didn't get that. She She really didn't get that. She thought she was going to get all this stuff for free, which I'm sure everybody told her was not the case. Uh, Janice says, why is it so hard to get an address for the whales? It should be clear on their website. Yes. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Oh, the, the palace machine sometimes drives me nuts. Happy says, all that bullying from Harry and Meghan and, and never get to tell their side of the story. It's, it's so unfair to Wills and Catherine. Yes. Yes. Uh, morning just finished Philly's 5K run for cancer. Offered it up to the King and Princess of Wales. Oh, that's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. And he says, yes, the address is Kensington Palace. Yeah, I'm just confused. Somebody else, Gertz Royal said it wasn't, but I'm just so confused because it's like, well, th the site I found was pretty official. And, but I mean, it's not their main what, <sighs> again, clear, clear. Offerings is good. Shani, how do you, how do you, do you think you will be able to offer an annual membership? I, people keep asking me about that. I need to work on it. Um, but there's so much going on. I feel so behind right now. I, I was, it was kind of funny because I talked to my sister and she's a teacher and a couple of times she mentioned, she's like, yeah, you know, you kind of have symptoms of ADD. And I'm like, you know what I kind of do? I, I wouldn't think so necessarily as a kid. But as an adult, like I'm a bit scatterbrained and I have a hard time focusing sometimes and I, you know, need a lot of stimulation and everything. And so I'm like, hmm, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I don't know why. So, uh, Tori Meyer says, what frustrates me is that people have been commentating that here, Megan needs to, to apologize. Megan needs to be the one to apologize, including Cheryl Crow, Kim Kardashian and Sunny Hostins. Oh, Megan needs an apology. Megan needs to be one to apologize. Yeah, um, she does. She does not need an. I, in my personal opinion, she does not need an apology. She's, she's again. Harry and Megan have failed to do the one simple thing, which all of Megan's friends do. If you notice, fail to take any responsibility for anything, anything. It's very annoying. Dina says, pathology always takes a while after surgery. Yeah, it, it does take a couple of days. They want to be sure. They probably run a couple of tests just to cover their bases. They don't go by their initial test. They probably do a follow-up test. Again, they really cover their bases. Uh, Maureen says, I found her speech incredibly brave and it is devastating. I had to get um, to the stage of her having to reveal private medical diagnosis to the world. Yes, I mean, I'm sure it was very hard, but she did need to say it at some point uh mima says do you think she should have just said i have cancer and i'm being treated for it that way there would be no, could be no more speculation yes and no because i think again part of pr is trying to make things not only more palatable but just generally you could say better in a way so I understand why she softened some of the language. Yes, probably people are going to read into it, but that's just people more being idiots than anything else. Um, and if you know enough about cancer in general, you can probably read between the lines. Like, you know, I was asking somebody with a lot of experience telling me that, well, pre pre preventative, because I was, I was worried because I had put that Catherine has cancer and somebody's like, well, they took, you know, whatever it was out. So she doesn't have cancer. And I'm like, but they're giving her chemo. They're, obviously worried that she might have more cancer. They don't, they don't give that to a healthy person unless they're really sure it's really necessary. And so I asked this person, they're like, yeah, you know, based on my experience and everything, you know, this, essentially they're very worried that cancer is present. And so, but at the same time too, they removed the problem area. Again, it's just very, very hard to be definitive. Um, but at the same time, too, I think having such a, a stark thing is, is is hard. And she almost, you know, you kind of feel for her. She wants to soften it for herself, too. 
Um, she doesn't want to be like, I, I feel like, cause I would probably do it too in a way. Cause I wouldn't want to be all that definitive maybe either. And again, my natural instinct too would be to soften what I'm saying a bit. It's just, again, I think sometimes, and people are just the, the ridiculousness of people reading way too much into things. is just really, really challenging. Teresa, thank you so much for the super sticker. If I did not say thank you already, um, cause there's been a lot. So I, I might've missed or gotten to you. I can't remember. So Tracy says, I'm pleased you and um, YouTube's I follow can hold their heads up high by not getting involved in the speculation and demands to KP to disclose what was wrong with Catherine, Princess of Wales. Humpty, Humpty do Australia. I love that. <laughs> Humpty do. I, that, I, that would be, I'd be so happy to write that as my address. <laughs> That's awesome. But yes, um, I, I, I don't need to know what it is. And again, I think that comes from, unless you've had your own personal, I think, experience with, you know, cancer or medical issues or something like that, like you really don't know what you, you might have a harder time understanding. And so I just like to put out the perspective that other people might not see. It's like, yeah, you don't need to know everything. Nobody is required to give you any information that they're not willing to give to you. There is something called privacy, um, medical privacy and everything. And Catherine, I think, is fully, fully deserving of that. So, uh, so Mercedes says cancerous tissues take between three plus weeks to get the results and treatment starts until the surgery heals. Doctors tell you when. Yes. Yes. Uh, d God bless the doctors and team. Imagine how difficult it was for them. My friend worked in pediatric oncology for six years, but had to leave too sad. Yes. Yeah, it is hard. And imagine too, you have the princess of Wales and you have to tell her a mother with three young children that she has cancer. Like I don't envy them for s saying that at all, at all. What happened says not lying. Surgery went well. Nothing looks suspicious yet. When results return later, maybe days, weeks, then found to be cancer. Yeah, it's a very simple explanation. I don't know why people, some people are freaking out about it. Uh, Ms. Mayberry said the only reason Harry and Meghan released a statement was so everyone would mention their name in the middle of it. Shameless. Yes. Although I will say articles would have come out too, going, where is Harry and Meghan's statement? Again, Again, it's it's a catch twenty two. Okay, Oki Gigi says my cancer journey was no one's business. Can't imagine having to share it with strangers. It was hard enough with family. Yes, and again, they they did sort of have to let us know because if we won't see her consistently until the fall, I mean that that's a pretty big timeline. So I, I understand why they had to tell us. But I think when it came to the surgery, people were getting ridiculous because they told us when she would be back and that they couldn't respect that. I think is ridiculous. Marie B says she's married new name people. Um, yes and no because she gets the name of her husband, but she doesn't actually. Uh, legally change her name because she can't have a royal name. I know you have to be blood royal. It is how it is. Lisa says, uh, Princess Catherine is such a classy woman, deserves a privacy requested and the respect she deserves. Yes. P Pacific says, bless Queen Camilla. She shouldered such a lot at this time. Beautifully, I might add. We'll send her a note of thanks. Yes, she deserves one as well. Let's put this back up here and I will. Um, and so you can also see too what they suggest for addressing the envelope to um, the king or the queen or the prince and princess of Wales. Okay. Let's keep going down here. Uh, Catherine's ring is much bulkier. I'm just going to buy this whole thing. Yes, it's it's a big ring. Um, and so for sure says she's lost weight and I would imagine that ring is a bit heavy to wear and it may have not have fit around her finger. And so that may have been part of it too. Um, and so <laughs> Janice says, who is going to wear a 12 carat sapphire circled with diamonds around the house? Um, I do appreciate her seeming to wear it during any royal occasion. But yeah, if she's at her house and she's she's feeling like, you know, she doesn't want to wear it at that particular moment, yeah, take it off. Take it off. She's in the comfort of her own home. And again, if she, it was off for like a year, then I would mention it. Or like consistently, I'm like, wait, because somebody was making a fuss about that. And I was like, oh, well, Brittany, what are you going to say about this? I was like, nothing. Because it's different between a year and one single picture <laughs> at home. Um, 
because Megan seemed to obviously wear her pretentious multi-carat diamond pinky ring, but would not wear her wedding ring. It was odd. Uh, Persephone Hades, if the Princess Wales losing weight, her ring may be too big. That would be too. How many out there would wear a $150,000 ring? Although I think it would probably be worth more just because of the association with Diana in the house, especially one that was her late mother-in-law's so much historic value. Yes. Yes. Uh, Kay, um, Simantel says, I can't sleep with my rings on. I've lost more rings that way. Still married. I love my husband. Yes. I mean, I do like, uh, for me, it's my watch. This watch even doesn't even actually tell time, believe it or not. That might seem silly, but it, it doesn't. Uh, it's supposed to like wind. If I wear it, it's it's supposed to wind and, and stay on time. It never does. Um, maybe I just need to manually wind it. I just think it's silly. But anyways, um, I, I keep this ring on and I'm or uh, watch on because I feel weird when I don't have a watch on and I'm just so used to it. It doesn't bother me. I also like having these earrings and these two are from Ana Lucia and I love having these kind of they're kind of mock solitaires. Just love always having them in. I, if I need to wear something else, I change them. But I love having them in because then you just got something classic and you're used to wearing it. Uh, uh, Yushina says, with some medical tests, you have to take your jewelry off your jewelry. Maybe she was on her way and just forgot. Yeah. Again, there are so many logical explanations for a one-time thing that I just don't have an issue with it. <laughs> no one in their right mind would wear a gigantic ring like that when not needed. Yes. Becky says, I think she wore her ring because everyone's speculating about it during the Mother's Day picture. Yes. And I think, again, she just wants to, again, reassure people. And but I imagine, too, it's a big it's 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 historic. She doesn't want to hurt it. And, you know, if she's around her house hanging out with her kids, she probably doesn't always want to wear it. Gemstone Girl says, how vile are these people that call themselves sugars? Yes. Uh, my Janice says, my daughter is Kate, and it drove me nuts when some people would insist on calling her Katie. It's just based on respect to all people by carrying the name they wish to call by. Yes, it's just, again, though, when it comes to the public and how it's been portrayed for the last... Again, that was something... I don't know how they would have addressed it, but that was something that the palace maybe should have addressed as... William and Catherine were dating because at this point the train has left the station. There's just ain't no way to take it back. Um, I, I know I had a friend, a childhood friend who, whose name was Caitlin. I always called her Katie and apparently she tried to change her name to Kate at some point, but I was like, but you're just Katie to me. <laughs> you will always be Katie to me. Um, Cause that's the, that's the name I know. Um, so it's, it's just one of those things where the initial name you come to know somebody by, by becomes their name, at least in the public zeitgeist. Um, she might have met, my friend might have met some other people and they know her by Kate. That's totally fine. But when it comes to the public image, Kate Middleton is what's stuck. Uh, Brittany, I bet the ring is way too big and she's concerned about losing it. It's probably heavy and can slip off her finger. She's lost so much weight. Yeah, she did look really thin in that video. And I feel, um, and you know, it's just tough. Sam R says only... Report comments if they are genuinely abusive. Just block them if you don't want to see what they are saying. Click on three dots next to their comments. Yes. Yes. I try to, again, give people sort of the benefit of the doubt. But if it's particularly ugly, I just go no. Just go no. Um, uh, that's just the only way to deal with it. This has turned into the Annus Horribilius of the 21st century for the royal family. Yes, I butchered that. Um. I'm from Brazil. This is uh, Valeria. And I wish the best for the Princess of Wales. Yes. Uh, Princess Anne is a goat. This is from Asma. Yes, she is. Uh, McCinder says, it's much better for my peace of mind just to block the sugars they cannot be reasoned with. Yeah. Especially if I look at their profile and they have a whole slew of Harry and Meghan posts. I'm like, I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna change your mind. You ain't gonna change my mind. It's not worth my mental energy to deal with negative comments. Sometimes I try to let people stay, but then they just become obnoxious. And then I'm like, eh, you gotta go. Sorry. I would be willing to have a discussion with you, but you you know, oftentimes it just comes across that people are like snarky and stuff. So uh Hamish Hamish's Hamish's mom says Grace Kelly was a huge star already. Megan was just trying at that stage in her life was never going to reach that level. Big difference. Yes. And Grace Kelly came from a very prominent family in Philadelphia. Like her father was an Olympic, um, 
I think he was in boating, rowboat. I think he, uh, rowing. Nah, that's the baddest word. He was an Olympic rower, like gold medalist. Her brother, I believe, also won a gold medal. So they were a very prominent family. And in addition to that as well, Grace, I think, just had a lot of natural elegance. And Grace had nothing to prove. She had already won an Oscar at 26 or 25. Like, she had nothing to prove. Meghan Markle lacked talent. She did not necessarily have a huge leg up in life in some ways. Like she did. She went to private schools and everything paid for by her father. But in other ways, she did not. And she didn't really have a particular strong talent in acting, I don't think. And so she was always a D-list star. And D-listers, what I've noticed about them generally is that they're very, very desperate for attention. And Meghan Markle exudes that. She is desperate for any sort of attention. And... I think there were people like that in old Hollywood too, but Grace Kelly was not that. She was A-list 100%. She was now in Alfred Hitchcock films and she was played against Frank Sinatra, Cary Grant. Oh, what's the other one um, who played Rhett Butler in Gone with the Wind? Golly, I can't remember his name off the top of my head at this moment. But she played against some of the best people in the field and won an Oscar and then became a princess. So just totally different experiences. Um, that's not true. As a breast cancer, it's very, as a breast cancer survivor, it's very devastating. Don't know what that is in reference to, but um, I think it's somebody who we ended up having to block. Um, Blurple Dragon, I, t I teared, yes, I too teared up watching the statement. This is so sad. This shocked me as bad as Princess Di Diana's passing. Yes, it does have elements of that. It does. It does. Uh, Terry said, don't forget the queen had bone cancer. I've heard also blood cancer. Again, we don't know for sure. Nobody's ever officially confirmed from the palace. When did the public find out about the queen's diagnosis? They referred to the queen's issue as a mobility issue, which would have been true. She was in her late 90s. But, but, um, yeah. Ah, uh, McCinder says, you got your shells all set up behind you. They look great. They do. They do. I need to get something fixed, but thankfully you can't see the... Um, the washers that don't quite work. <laughs> so, but yes, it looks so much better and um, more official. American Woman says, I saw one post an article saying Catherine's cancer is a perfect opportunity to get back in the family. Infuriating. Yes. And that's just, it ain't going to happen, guys. It just ain't going to happen. Not going to happen at all. Uh, Tori Myers says, how dare Harry and Meghan disrespect Princess Catherine? The nerve. Meghan will never be Catherine or be friends with her. No, she will not. Oncology professional here, Judy J. You can't compare what your family members went through. Please stop speculating. I mean, it's true, but it's it's kind of a lot of the situations are remarkably similar in some ways. Um, so yeah. Julie says cancer is hard to hear for me because of my mom. Hard chemo. She passed away. I still miss her. Wish she was here. Um Alice says, at least Catherine is in good physical shape, but having the stomach surgery makes it harder. Yes. Yes. Um, and apparently there some of the cancer treatments have switched around with sometimes they'll do chemo first before surgery. So it'd been, you know, you, you never know because they did have to have performed surgery before, but it could have been too that they, she might've had to go through chemo and then surgery, but obviously they didn't think they'd lose it. So uh, Kibble says, gosh, I hope she doesn't lose her beautiful hair. So uh, they've they've come up with some way of sort of mitigating that for a lot of people, which is called a cold cap. Um, I've heard it's not particularly pleasant, but yes, that could help her keep her hair for as long as possible. Um, but we don't know. <laughs> so this is from Michelle Brittany. You mentioned Miss Pippa stole your blanket. Blankets. She steals all the blankets. I bought an unhide blanket and immediately my chihuahuas took it. So I got another one. They took it. I tried one more. There's two. Yeah. Yeah. That's totally true. I need to like actually like wash it because now they, they all smell like dogs. So even if I wanted to lay on the couch and use the blanket, it's I'm going to smell like dog. <laughs> A uh, breast cancer survivor I know hates seeing red ribbon, pink ribbons and wants to forget the disease and focus on life to live. I'm so much more than that blasted disease was her cry to me. Very true. Very true. Very true. Uh -huh. Alice says, I'd like to go on one of your trips. I want to, to do the Beatles tour of Liverpool places they played at, like the um, Cavern Club. Oh, very cool. So I 
usually all my tours really do focus on sort of um, Europe and Royals. So I probably won't do that particular tour, but that is cool though. That is cool. <laughs> Some people laugh to relieve stress. Yes. And wasn't that like a forced thing in the office? Like Steve Carell made everybody laugh or not Steve Carell, but um, uh, Mike was his character's name. Made everybody laugh. <laughs> Question, please. Why is it some people's names in green and what does that mean? So that means they are members. They are YouTube, the members of the channel. So they help support the channel in different ways. And they, there's a special members always live stream. And I try to do member Mondays sharing different things. So yeah. Uh, I think Prince William is keeping up a good positive front for Princess and their children, even though he is hard. Um, even though his heart is breaking on the inside, they hadn't told the kids yet. So he couldn't go out in a pub. Uh, public and act sad. Yes, yes, yes. He couldn't do that. <laughs> uh, Piers Morgan, the large comedian, to wear and sell free Kate T-shirts on his show just three days ago. Shame on him. Yes. Judith says, "Do you know the postage to send a card to the UK?" I do not. I'm sorry, I do not. Uh, so I would suggest going into the local post office and asking them what and what they say. Uh, so SEJ says our membership gifts picked randomly. So people, yes, who give the membership gifts, apparently those who are interested in receiving it, you have to like click something on your YouTube thing and then you get like a message saying that you um, can get a gift or something. Um, so. Awesome flowers. And SFE says, hi, everyone. I'm a little late. Sorry. No worries. Kay uh, Simentel. I have a sister and two nieces who believed Catherine was out um, because Ilsum hadn't gotten Rose pregnant. I told them I was sure it was cancer. Yeah, it's uh, I there was a YouTuber I watched and I was really disappointed because she repeated the rumor and she's like, oh, isn't that interesting? I'm like, no, it's not. It's dumb. It's dumb. <laughs> Sorry. I, get, I, get, I just get frustrated because I'm like, this is so dumb. Oh, for Majesty the Queen. And thank you so much for the tip this morning. I really appreciate it. A little something to treat to get yourself a treat after fighting off the sugars today speaks volumes of their character when this is a time we should be showing compassion and they are out in full force trolling. Do better sugars. Your members love you. Why, thank you so much for Majesty the Queen. Yes, I just think it's so sad that people just feel the need to like, come on now, shouldn't we be recognize the terrible thing Catherine and William are going through and just recognize that. And I just don't understand the ridiculousness, but I think it goes to show too that Harry and Meghan, they're a toxic pram that attracts toxic people. Um, it just does. Christine says you've done a wonderful job bringing the news to us. Thank you. You are so welcome. You're so welcome. So uh, Shaz says, yep, I used to while follow Harry and Meghan after the um, LK Prim lost respect for them during the South Africa tour. And the sugars bullying me was definitely the end of it for me. Yeah, I, I don't understand. And that's why I keep doing what I do and not stop. And I don't look at there's a particular awful sugar profile that I just don't look at, except for occasionally to go on there and just report like every post that person puts on of me because I'm like, you don't really, it's like, it is harassment. It's like, they don't understand the difference between constructive criticism and like um, the hating or whatever. It's just, yeah, just a very ugly thing. <laughs> what is a sugar? I know I'm out of the loop. Press for Princess Catherine and the kids. So they are just Harry and Meghan fans who are, I would say, a little on the crazy end. They can be very nasty. And it's just an ugly, ugly thing. So, yeah, that's kind of who they are. And they just don't really want to hear any criticism or any, like, no, duh, what Harry and Meghan done have damaged the monarchy themselves. So many things. They don't want to hear that. Co Cuckoo Kachu ask any updates on the investigation of the three that infiltrated Catherine's medical records. So, again, it was an attempt. We do not know. It's, it's, not believe that they succeeded, but they are in internally investigating at the London clinic. If they need to go beyond that, talking to authorities or something, they may do that. 
Uh, Teresa Natalie says, Hi, Brittany, just became a member. Love your fair and honest uh, views on all things royals. Sending prayers and best wishes for a speedy recovery to Her Royal Highness Princess Catherine. Maggie Raynor says, remember, Brit, Ma Markle has a freakish attention to detail. She chooses her words with aim. Yeah, I think so. Uh, DP says, Brittany, do you remember the very cold and icy press release they made when Prince Philip died? This is a brand. Yes. But Megan will be very flowery and wordy about people she has barely she barely knows. Like the family of the woman who lost her life um, at this shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Like she won't respond to to her uh, ds says Brittany, have you recovered well from your surgeries hand and leg um wrist mostly yes um i have pretty good i mean it's, it's still weaker than my left in some ways um and it gets it gets tired more often and stuff um but it does pretty well my foot not so much it's, it's usually stiff every morning and that'll probably get worse as i age <laughs> Uh, that was because my, my, for some inexplicable reason, my surgeon decided not to have me do any sort of physical therapy, which is odd because you kind of need physical therapy just to get things used. Like I was doing occupational therapy on my wrist two weeks post-surgery. Like once they took the main cast off and gave me more of a temporary cast, I could take off and on. Like I was in the occupational therapy, taking little pins and putting them from one little cup to the other cup and from that cup back to the main cup like that's what you do in occupational therapy like very simple things um so i think my wrist is much better than my than my foot in some ways but uh my wrist may bother me more as i get older i may find it harder to write as i get older i'm not sure maureen griffin megan thank you so much for the tip megan isn't even fergie she lacks the loyalty sarah ferguson has showed for the rf she's wallace 2.0 yes i do agree with that and you can say what you want about fergie i still think she's not the best but at least fergie shows at least some respect to the institution Jane Bucks fan says you have a PET scan to tell if it's malignant, but I feel that they only do it in certain cases, not when surgery is being done and biopsy being taken. Yeah. They might've been too, that they needed to go ahead and have the, the, the surgery because they need to have the surgery anyways. And this was sort of an additional thing. And they're like, okay, we know it could be cancer. So we're going to go ahead and do this because this is where we want to be again. I don't, I don't know enough to say, but yeah. Uh, Alice says, I also had breast cancer. They discovered by lung uh, but I had to wait a week. It was devastating. I'm a survivor and I thank God every day. I'm so glad that's wonderful to hear. Linda says, according to what is speculated here, the international media was trying to pay for princesses records. Yes, I did hear that. And I would not be surprised if that's, that's true. Tori Meyer says, Brittany, can you get more t-shirts or merchandise? I'm positive people will buy your merchandise. Yes, I should. I still technically have more t-shirts, but they're more of like small, extra small size, maybe still have a couple of mediums. So I got to figure that out, but I need to, I, I need to take, um, a couple uh, be careful because if I sell over a certain amount, I have to pay, I have to put sales tax on them. So I, I got to figure that out. Kathleen says, Brittany, you are just overwhelmed. I do feel that. <laughs> I do feel that a lot of times. I'm like, there's so much I should do. And I was just like, but again, too, it's like, I wonder as I'm thinking about what my sister told me and everything that like, it's, it's part of just how my brain functions. And so even if I desperately want to be more organized, it's just really hard for me. So yeah, I don't know. Isa Texas says, Brittany, do you, you do have symptoms, but we love you. Why? Thank you. Why? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Addie says to Brittany and inattentive ADD may ex exist. You may have never been diagnosed. Yeah. Um, and in girls, it would represent, it would uh, come across different as children than it would for boys. And so, uh, yeah. So anyways, I, I was just like, once I more, I thought about, it, I was like, wait, that explains so much. Uh, so we have Luna as well. Luna Joan became a YouTube member. Why? Thank you so much, Luna. Uh, Stone Royal says, can I give a huge shout out to Prince William for handling this cruising so well? So heavy is a crown. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. And we will wrap this up here in a minute. Fire Elemental said, I worked at an international clinic in Cleveland for 30 years. Being an anesthesia provider, I had access to all patients, even though I hadn't taken care of them yet. I imagine similar elsewhere. 
I would say yes, that's true. But I imagine the the hospital, as soon as they knew they were dealing with Catherine, they put a password on her file. So nobody could access anything related to her unless they had the password. So um, that would be that would be my guess. Okay. Water says my mom lost uh, with my mom. She lost a lot of weight during her cancer treatments. I think that's true. And again, so many things, so, so many issues. It all depends. Uh, Kearns now girl says Catherine might have had a scan, but you can't wear jewelry for treatment. Yes. Yes, it is so true. All right. I'm trying to get down to the bottom here real quick. Not so many. <laughs> it's Megan, like Reagan says, you need some staff now. I do. I do. I may have some. Well, I was actually hoping to ask somebody and then because they, they were um, in between something and then they ended up getting another job, which is fantastic for them. But I was also like, oh, I was going to ask you. <laughs> Netflix, a loving bee wife, South Park only commented to be mentioned. Yes. B level baby says any removal over a certain size is required to have a biopsy. Oh, and yes, Clark Gable. That was that was who I was thinking of. So yes, uh, Judy J says hand function is intricate, and so much goes into activities we prescribe. Nice shout out to OT. I'm a pediatric oncology OT. Awesome! Yay! I I. Uh, my occupational therapist was awesome and I feel like I got so much more use. Um, and I, I've, I'm really bummed that they didn't have me go and do physical therapy, even though I wasn't able to put any weight on my foot. If they had just been moving it, I think I would have been so much better off. Julie says I have to go. So hopefully you all include Brittany and have a best and Easter and say, stay safe. Happy Easter peace to you all. Yes. Aw, Shaz says, oh, thank you all in the chat for making this a wonderful live. Stay safe and keep smiling. Yes, so much, guys. Thank you so much for joining, guys. I really do appreciate it. All the prayers and support out to Catherine. And so, guys, um, thank you so much. And I shall see you next week. And I hope we hear more amazing things from Catherine and how she's doing here really, really soon. Bye.